It's YouTube. Hi and welcome to TransWest Truck Trailer RV located in Frederick, Colorado. My name is Larry Vickers. Today, if you'll notice, we have the truck hooked onto a Cimarron toy hauler. And the reason I kind of picked that trailer is we're getting into that time of year. People's gonna be snowmobiling. Obviously, it's hunting season, that type of thing. So you can have a visual note of what these two look like together. And these two really pair up nice. Um, if you have any other questions on, on this particular trailer, please give the guys a call here at the store. The stock number is 5N191165. So now we'll talk about the truck. This is a 2020 Freightliner M2106. The conversion is Summit Hauler. So today we'll start taking a look at the rear of the truck so we can see how we have this trailer hooked up. Now your truck will come with a gooseneck ball. So, and there's a backup camera. So hooking it up was very simple. Right there, you can see where we have the safety chains hooked up. Now the lights are hooked up right here. This is where you hook up the lights. Now, right beside the light is a hooked up for more cameras. This uses the Voyager system. So you can actually hook up to three more cameras right here. One thing unique about the Summit Hauler conversion compared to others is the bed. This is aluminum, this isn't steel. So 10 years down the road, it's gonna look very similar to what it does right now. Another unique thing about the Summit Hauler conversion is we put 800 extra pounds over the rear axle. And the reason for that is if we're driving without a trailer on and we run it, get into mud, that helps with traction. In addition, if we find ourselves driving through a rainstorm, rain that will obviously help from hydroplaning. So just another safety issue that Summit Hauler has addressed and taken care of. This does come with a little step right here, which is used to jump up and in to help hook up the camera or your hook up your trailer. Summit Hauler has the most storage capacity of any of the trucks on the market. We'll take a look at this front one. So you can see all the room in there. In addition, there is a hookup for an air hose if you need it. As we progress, we'll take a look at the back seat. Now, just like most haulers, the back seat does make down into a bed, and this does meet DOT requirements for a bed. So if you have to travel and then require to sleep, this qualifies. And to get that back up into a seat, you simply push a button. Just like that. Right here is a trickle charger. So if we're traveling and we get to a campground or something like that in the evening and we want to use the DVD or turn the lights on, we plug that in. So it assists the batteries is what that does. The batteries are located right here. As we continue to go forward, this is the DEF tank this holds six gallons. And the research, recent research has shown that we're getting roughly 350 to 400 miles per one gallon of death. It comes with two 50 gallon fuel tanks, one on each side. Here is one. Now they are connected, so as the truck is sitting here like it is, that fuel will balance itself out. However, when you go to fuel the tanks, you need to do them independently, so one on each side. 
This is the block heater right here for folks in cold climate areas. Now we'll take a look at the driver's seat. The truck is air ride. So right here is where we would adjust the level of air in the seat to either raise it or lower it. This is for heated or cooled seats right here. This switch is for the lumbar system. So however much air you want into the back seat. Right here is the kill switch. As much electricity is running through this vehicle, it's really good practice to get into shutting that off when the truck's not in use, simply to stop any stray voltage. So as you can see, the key is down here. So you can start the, the truck from the ground. And that's really a good practice when it gets colder, we're going into winter, to let that truck warm up a little while before we take off in it. Now when you go to start your truck, turn the key halfway, right there. Now let those gauges go all the way over and all the way back and then start the truck. And the reason for that is if we get in a hurry and start it too quickly, there is a chance that it'll kick a code out that simply doesn't exist. If we talk about the tires, it comes with Michelin R2280 R22.5. The Summit Hauler conversion comes with tire balancers right there. I've spoke about them a lot in previous videos. Basically those have BBs in it and as you gain speed that balances everything. So that's a safer ride plus it will actually extend tire life up to 40 percent now when we talk about the hood it's a very thick compressed fiberglass this just isn't a couple of, of thin layers laying across there so it makes it extremely tough an example of how tough it is is last august we had a hailstorm come through and that demolished the pickup trucks well you can even tell the summit haulers had been touched This is stock number 5N191492. Now this is the Cummins 8.9 liter engine. It is coupled with the Allison 3200 transmission. It offers 350 horsepower and 1,150 foot-pounds of torque. And as you can see underneath here, things are kind of color coordinated for us. So where we see red, that stuff we don't want to touch. We need to let the, the Freightliner guys take care of that. But if you see yellow like this, that's where we check the oil. So if we see yellow, that's stuff you and I, I can look at. In addition, the power steering fluid is right here. Now I showed you where the batteries were towards the rear of the truck. Now if we leave a light on or something, the battery's dead, we can actually jump it right here. So we don't need to tear into all of that back there. We can simply jump start the vehicle right here. Now if we are underneath there checking oil or doing things and a gust of wind comes up, it, it's going to stop it. The only way to get that hood down is to manually force it down. Now if we step over and take a look directly in front of the truck, a couple of things to notice. One is how large that windshield is. It comes with 2,500 square inches of glass. So when we're sitting in there, obviously we're going to be able to see a lot. So that's another safety advantage to the Summit Hauler. This is a very unique grill we designed. In addition, the bumper is broken into three parts. See one here, here, and over here. And the logic behind that is if we get into an accident and hit something, we simply have to replace this instead of doing the entire bumper. As we continue to walk around, we'll take a look at the passenger seat. One thing to really recognize is just how much room is in that cab. That coupled with the fact that we have air ride makes a 12 hour trip basically seem like nothing.
here is our other fuel tank right here. So when we take a look in the back seat, from the ground we can get a really good shot of the DVD player. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the inside. So as we kind of start to take a look and go over the cab, we'll work it from top to bottom to keep things simple. Right here's the backup camera. I pointed out where the hookup is for additional cameras, where you're gonna see that right here. Right over here is our air horn. As we continue to come down, the gauges are pretty self-explanatory, but there's two I wanna talk about. These two here, the, these are both for air. So the top one, is designated just for brakes. So since this is an air brake system, that's a huge advantage over pickup trucks that have the hydraulic brakes. For example, if we get a, a leak in this truck, we simply keep hitting the brake because there's an unlimited supply of air. Compare that to a hydraulic brake that leaks, you're gonna go to hit that brake and it's gonna be softer and softer. And if it gets extreme enough and you really need the brakes, you're gonna to go to hit them and there's not gonna be anything there and then we really got problems. This is a wraparound dash. So as you can see sitting here, everything is within reach very easily. So up here, this is simply for the windows, cruise control there. This comes with an automatic transmission. Now I realize a truck this size can, can be kind of intimidating at first, but there's really no reason for it to be. For example, right now we're in neutral with our brake on. So when we go to drive the truck, just push the brake, R is reverse, D is drive. Very, very simple. As we pan over, just hit some of the buttons. This is the dump valve that lets air out of the back. We used that this morning when we hooked up the trailer. This is our e-brake here. It already has the lines run for somebody that has uh, air in the trailer. We, it comes with the glad hands. We can get that installed for you before you leave. This is the fan for the back. This is a tra the trailer brake here. Now right here is the engine brake. Now that's different than on a pickup. For example, if we set that to low, where we're affecting three of the six cylinders, not only does that stop exhaust coming out, but it restricts fluid coming in. So that is a true engine brake. So if we go to high, now we're affecting all six. So if we're coming out of the Rocky Mountains and find ourselves on a ste steep decline, we want that on six because that's gonna start shutting everything down. It'll be a lot safer and that'll maintain wear on your brakes as well. Finally, this is the climate control right here. Fairly basics, just put the air hot or cold as you want and how fast you want the fan to run. So an extremely nice, nice truck we have out on the market today. If you have any questions on this, feel free to give me a call, 970-370-4067, the work extension, 303-684-3404, or email me, larry.vickers at transwest.com. Thanks for tuning in today.